Hey guys, what's up? I hope everyone's well. And in this one, we're gonna take a look at the Laravel lifecycle. And we're gonna focus around certain things like the requests. And particularly, we're gonna take a look at how requests are made inside of PHP. This is just the general routing request, what happens when requests are made in PHP. So there's a request made to a web browser by a client, and that request then goes to a server, either Apache or Nginx, which is a web server. And from there, uh, there is some PHP code that is executed, and that's done by the PHP interpreter. And the PHP code may reach out to the database and receive any data that is requested by PHP. And also, you know, the server might have some extensions or file systems or any PHP files. At this point, then you get a response. It's sent back from the server, and it's usually in a form of HTML or an HTTP request of some sort, usually a 200 status or whatever the status may be. And that's generally just a high level review of the requests in PHP. When it comes to the Laravel request lifecycle, a user makes a request, that request goes to a web server, and in Laravel, that public index.php file uh, loads a bunch of autoloaders and loads the application and it bootstraps it. The kernel receives the request and then returns a response. And after that, the service providers are registered after they have been booted, get dispatched to a router. Then from there, the router does any logic that hits up in the controllers. And from there on, it's rendered to a view and the response is returned. Uh, the key to Laravel lifecycle is bootstrapping service providers and registering them are pretty much the key to creating your Laravel applications. So keep that in mind. Once again, this is a high level overview of how the framework works. Uh, the entry point, once again, I want to stress starts at the index.php file. We load autoloaders. Uh, we then jump into the instance of the application. We flow through the kernels and then iterates over a list of providers. We hit routes, controllers, any middleware that we put forth in our logic, and then we return a response. So we're going to take a look at this just through the project, kind of get you an idea of where things are and how it flows through a Laravel project. Okay guys, so here we are at the starting point of the Laravel application. So I'm in the publics directory, and in that I'm looking at the index.php file. So uh, this little area here is basically if your application is up or in maintenance mode, so if you ran like a PHP artisan up or down, uh, it'll display or render the correct um, you know contents uh, before it actually starts up the application. And right over here, this is where the auto load file is ran and it conveniently uses Composer to kind of manually load all your scripts and classes. And down here, um, this is where things get bootstrapped. So basically um, there are two types of kernels and we're gonna take a look at them. So depending on the type of request um, that is made, this will be handled by either one of the two kernels available. So that kernel file is found inside of the HTTP folder in the apps directory and Here's the first one. This is the app.http kernel, and the other one is the console uh, kernel, and we'll just go over them really quickly. So basically inside of this kernel, we have uh, middleware that is run on every request inside the application, and down here we have middleware that's run on routes, uh, depending on their group routes or route groups, and uh, down here at the very, very bottom, we have middleware that may be assigned to groups or used individually. So this HTTP kernel inside of the app directory um, handles a lot of the middleware work. So here inside of this console kernel, we take a look at things like commands. So if you wrote any special or unique uh, PHP artisan commands, and this is where that gets taken care of in the central part of the application. You'll also see things like around queue jobs here that are processed, um, any other uh, scheduled jobs or anything like that. Um, you know, gets kind of handled by this kernel. And once again, this kernel uh, functions around middleware, any kind of sessions or CSFR tokens or things like that. And it handles any response methods that simply come into this request and then it returns a response. So once everything has been uh, loaded and bootstrapped and the kernels are doing what they're supposed to do and, you know, making the appropriate requests and responses, then we move on to our service providers. And you'll find your service providers over here under providers. So we're in the, you know, app directory and uh, we're in the folder called providers here. And I just opened this up. So here I am inside of the providers directory and we have a list of providers. We have app service provider, auth service providers, broadcasters, events, and route service providers. When you want to configure these providers, um, this is found inside of the config then, you know, folder here and we have the app.php. So any kind of configuration for these providers is done so by this file. 
So when you want to configure these files here, or these providers, um, you can reach for the uh, configuration directory and you know the appropriate config file. So I guess the main thing to keep in mind here is that various like components and Laravel features are set up by the service providers. So once again, just think of it like this is where um, things such as database, queues, validation, route components, and any other major feature offered by Laravel is set up by these uh, providers over here. So a pretty unique service provider that we could take a look at right now is this route service provider. So this route service provider is in tune or, you know, in close connection with this routes directory, which contains the API routes, channel routes, console routes, and web routes. So keep that in mind. It's probably one of the most important ones that you'll probably be using uh, more often than not. And it's fairly interesting because you can wrap middleware around these uh, route providers. So you could have a route that has a middleware group and, you know, you can have a controller that has a middleware group. So uh, this one does another layer of middleware depending on what route process that you're using and adds a little more control or fine grain control to the routes process using this route service provider. So once the application has been bootstrapped and the service providers are all registered and booted, the request will then be handed over to the router for any kind of dispatching and then, you know, this route service provider will send any routes that uh, you create uh, to uh, like the controllers over here, which is found under uh, this folder. So that's ACTP controllers. Um, the controllers will provide specific actions or any kind of logic that you have here, and then we'll send data to the views. And the views are found down here inside of the resources directory inside of views. And in this case, we just have the welcome blade. But yeah, so any logic that you have here that comes from the router, um, the controller will then validate whether you need to run any kind of middleware around that or you know anything else, and it'll return the data to the view here. And the request is now at the point where it's at the view. The views will format the data accordingly, and then it will return a response. I know that's a lot of terminology, um, and we went over it fairly high level, and I tried to show you just a little bit of how this works through, you know, the actual project. So you can be familiar where, you know, key components and things are reaching for certain services or certain, um, you know, logic and uh, middleware in order to get that request uh, turned into a response and then validated and sent back to a view. You can find key points in the lifecycle to run any specific logic or, you know, find out where a service is uh, coming from and what it's doing or how to add a new service or, you know, update a service or add any kind of functionality to your project. And I hope that was useful. And it does become less intimidating when you understand how Laravel framework works and how the lifecycle works and how service providers and things are integrated. And just remember that when a request starts, it starts at the public.index.php file. We bootstrap some things, we auto load some things, we, we touch on the kernels and those kernels, depending on the request, will do what they need to do, any kind of middleware. And then we hit the service providers and then we dispatch that request to a router. And then if there's any more middleware or anything else that we need to check for, then that will go to uh, a controller and then the controller will send that off to a view and we get a response and this pattern just repeats. Okay. So don't forget to like, subscribe, let me know your thoughts below, hit the notification bell. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care until next time.